You know, I think a lot of people want to believe that some of the wildlife would sense some of the toxicity of what was going on in the water and, and act differently or respond to that. But what we actually saw was, you know, typical behavior from aquatic wildlife and, and the birds. I guess it was about the first week into May when I went out there the first time and uh, in the Barataria Bay near Cat Island. Birds were diving right in oil water. They would come off the nest and go out to feed and you know, dive face first, mouth open into oiled water and then take that back and sit on their nest, on their eggs. They would preen, you know, full of oil, so they're ingesting oil. And, and it was a, it's, it's a tough sight, you know, it, it's, a, it's a gut punch and it's almost a surreal type of experience to see it and to see these birds struggling. Some of them, you know, already succumbed to it. Um, but most of them still alive. I mean, they're fighters, but many of them just immobile. And, uh, and very easy to catch because they were, they were just completely covered in this thick, nasty stuff. And then you'd approach them with a net, for the most part with a net, and just scoop them up, you know, make sure you had the proper safety gear, of course. Um, net them, grab them, box them up. It, depending on where you were, if you were in the boat, you put them directly into a dog kennel and into a boat to get them to a, a, what we call a triage unit, where, where they did some, some quick triage on these birds and just get them stable. And then they would move them on to Fort Jackson initially to the rehab center. Once they were re completely rehabbed and cleaned and ready to go, Department of Wildlife and Fisheries did, made all the arrangements, along with Fish and Wildlife Service, to get them to decide where, they, where we needed to get them. Most of them initially, of course, were taken out of state. You know, for people seeing that and viewing that, what happened in the tragedy of oil birds. The biggest tragedy in coastal Louisiana is, of course, is coastal land loss. That's a big issue, especially with pelican habitat. And we're losing land faster, uh, faster than you'd be willing to believe, you know. And uh, so for me, it's not just losing age classes or losing individual animals, but it really made you understand, wow, in this whole bay, there's oil everywhere. And there are these two or three islands that are no bigger than an acre or so a piece where all these pelicans and spoonbills and other things are concentrated. So I, I think the what should be considered as, as, as a response to these impacts to these sensitive areas is, is more of uh, landscape scale restoration. So this is maybe not going into one particular acre of marsh that was oiled or impacted and trying to clean that acre, but can we create similar habitat in that area or in other areas you know it's it's almost we need to supplement what we've lost we may not be able to fix or regain what has been damaged but that's not to say that we cannot create alternative habitat improve other areas that maybe have a little life a little more life in them and and build upon that and improve those areas